Hey, welcome back to Soda Time Restoration. Back on the Vendo 39, uh, on the back side of the door, doing the interior of the door, uh, getting it undercoated on the inside, get everything coated with an undercoating product, give it that protection before we start putting our insulation in. So, but just a kind of a easy product to put on. Definitely cover everything up. This stuff is super, super sticky. Get everything covered as good as you can. If you got little holes in here, cover those up. You don't want that to get over onto your, your paint uh, surface at all. You got a little bit of a window for cleanup. Make sure you got gloves on. This stuff is sticky, sticky, sticky. Hard to get off. Get in those corners, especially down here. This is where most Dundo 39s have their moisture issues. Is right in this area here, not usually up top. Usually it's all down in here. So get that coated as best you can. I've already got an epoxy primer actually on this, so I'm actually giving it a little added protection here. Using the Permatex uh, heavy duty rubber, rubberized undercoating, uh, 81833. The next step we'll be doing is getting the insulation in uh, tomorrow. I'm going to let this dry overnight. Uh, we'll get our liner put on, show you how to put the gasket on. So the door is coming together pretty good. got the undercoating all put on did that the last night everything's nice and dry you can deal with it uh, we're gonna take this off and we're gonna start working on the, the center section piece all right let's see if we can get this broke back loose some get stuck in there pretty good don't want to break it. <clears throat> the old hard product that they used back in the late 40s, early 50s. Probably was a pretty good product in its day. Sometimes you get one of these and they're really in there just nice. I'll leave them in there. I think originally I thought when I did this one, this one was going to be really good, but it seems like the more there is a set of screws on this, uh, you'll see a set of screws over here that we took off in the, in the teardown video. There's another set on this side. Let's see if I can get uh, into it. You'll see uh, got this little set of screws right here. All right, let's see if we can get that released now. We got that cleaned out pretty good. Okay, let's see what that did. And we're loose. We'll get this cleaned up right quick. And we'll get it re-glued back in there. We'll go back again with our, our 3M product. I'm using the super fast urethane, the 8609. Comes in a caulking tube. Crazy, messy, 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 but great uh, strength. Use this for car automotive windshields, but super fast, sets up really good. 
you notice I cocked in uh, the bottom of a base of a lot of my stuff in the cabinet areas. So great product. Uh, probably picked that up at, uh, I got it in our Napa stores, the 3M product, but good product. Just make sure you wear some gloves. But as you see, the old product, pretty brittly. We'll clean these edges up a little bit, sand them just a little bit with some sandpaper. And if you're going to paint this, this is a great time to paint it so you're not going to tape off your machine. We'll paint this uh, separately. I just use a gloss uh, black on this. Cleans them up really nice. If you want to use a, once again, Go back to using that scotch right pad. It works great on plastic. Gives a little bit of, cleans up some of these dirty areas. Try not to use a razor blade on this piece because you'll gouge it and just, it's not fun cleaning up those, those areas. So also remember the tall scoop, this piece right here, it needs to go to the top of the machine, just like that. But we'll get this cleaned up. We we'll use a scotch bright pad on it. Might watch your washers here. The ones that are loose, you might want to get them out. Like those are glued in there pretty good. All right, let's wipe that down. Okay, let's get uh, our first coating on there. Make sure you get all your dust out of there. get a good good coating on there let that set up we'll come back in and hit that with another coat and uh, it'll be ready to go uh, one one good thing about I, I'm using the the Krylon fusion uh, it's a paint and a primer works really great uh, it's fast drying gives a little bit of protection as you can see it really cleans that piece up very very nice but we will give it another coat and uh, so while that's drying we're going to pull out uh, a little bit of all the stuff that we've got going on here okay we got the pieces buffed out here we're going to put the last polish. There's not a lot of this shown, but I'll cover just a little bit of this. I always polish out with, got a product called Vivid Restore that uh, I've got on Amazon right now. And man, it does a wonderful job on stainless chrome. Just gives it that extra pop. Doesn't take much to get it cleaned up. Clean up a lot of the small areas, but you'll see the black coming off. I'll get a close up view here of it, but we'll give you a link in the video to get you connected uh, to the product if you want it. It's $19.95 on uh, Amazon right now. Obviously free shipping if you got Prime, but you basically buff it in Go over every little area that you want covered. Let me get a rag and we'll get this last piece here covered here. Use a microfiber towel. 
kind of clean it up but you don't see a lot with the the polished out or the stainless uh, chrome hinges on there this one's been buffed out pretty good just need to be cleaned up gives a little bit of a mirror finish there is two ways you can put these on obviously if you just look at your door you can figure it out but you definitely want the slot where the pin comes in from the bottom you don't want to put it on upside down especially after you put the liner on you'll be taking that one back off these are 1032 screws and I try to just kind of run them in there first, get everything kind of lined up. Get it just right and go ahead and tighten it down. Polish this other one out. Most of this plate will be covered. I like to clean them up before I get them on there. About the only thing you're going to see is this, where the, actually the pen goes in. Most vivid area on there. It doesn't take long. It's an oil-based product. It looks like cotton candy. The product just looks like a little, little bit of cotton candy. You see the the black that it's taken off, but get you into a, a good looking plating like that. Not bad for an old piece. Yeah, January the 12th, 1951. Get this tightened back up and we'll move back to putting the insert back in where your bottles come through the chute. As far as prepping this, as you see, even the original one, you would have thought they would have put a bead of caulking around that whole thing, but that insert does have a good lip edge so what we're going to do, we're going to basically do like they did, except probably use a little better product than they had back in the uh, early 50s. We're going to put our plating on. We'll get our, our screws attached. We're going to go in there and we're going to caulk this whole back side with our product. Back then they had like a, a black tar that they laid around that to seal that out. Now we'll have a, a urethane product that we're gonna seal this off with. And that should seal everything off. Your liner then will go on top of that. So let me go grab the insert. I did put my second coat on. Looks really good. And when you set this down, you will feel a little bit of a where it drops in. You'll see some holes that you got to line up. So you'll know that you're there or not. And there, right there. And you can check yourself. I usually put those first screws in and uh, don't over tighten it. Remember, you're dealing with a, a very old piece of hard plastic and you don't want to bust one of these edges off right now. In fact, I would suggest do not use electric screwdriver on it just for that reason. So we're going to put those original screws that we just pulled out. There should be two washers. That's what they had from the factory. I'm actually reusing the, the old washers and just snug those up for now. And then we're going to stand it up and take a look at it. We'll stand it up this way. We'll leave it on the on the table here. <clears throat> okay, so you can kind of grab this. And yeah, perfect fit. 
you want to check these two holes here. One critical reason why you probably need to put your door on right now, your, your front uh, entry door, is because you've got to be able to get... And I've done this before. I've left them on the back. I've taped them, put my insulation on, put the liner on. But there is a chance if that little bracket falls off in the back, you're going to be taking that all apart. So I would say go ahead, get your, get this. We're going to do the door next, the front piece to this door. And then we'll suck this thing all the way down and get everything tight. Man, this... This 39 is just looking awesome. Really come out nice. So if you were bagging your parts and all the screws that you took off, off the selection door, you should have had these two pieces. If you lose them, you can make them, but it's, it's kind of nice to have them and not have to go try to make those. Those are the two that will go on the back side of our uh, piece there. That What happens is when you're putting that screw in through the housing, you're coming all the way through, and if this thing pushes against it, it falls down in there and you're pulling that liner off the back of that, and that is no fun at all. So I'd say word of advice, let's get this done. Let's get it put on there. We're gonna take off some pieces here, prep it, get the front painted. Most of the Vendo 39s that I've done, the selection door, I've had some that's had some broken corners on it that I've repaired and had pretty good luck with it. Pretty tough product that they used. Somebody probably got rough with them at one time and knocked a little corner off, but I was able to fix it. Sand, it sands really easy. But this little uh, chrome piece here, uh, we'll, we'll do a little buff demo on it. I buff them out. I'll come back in there I've seen them doing red, and I've seen them do them in white. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do on it. This one here looks pretty good shape. This little back piece needs to come off. We will be putting a new gasket on it. Try to save these screws. I mean, you can buy brand new ones, but if you can clean them up and use the original, uh, they clean up pretty nice. I mean, if they're rusted out, yeah, get them replaced. That is the gasket. We should, I hope I've got a new one. I haven't looked through all my stuff that I've gotten. That's all looking really good. We'll clean that up. We'll buff that out to get it shined up a little better. Need to get all this stuff out of the groove. You don't want to have any of that in there. Uh, the, new, the new gasket will will definitely uh, fill up that whole gap. So you want to get all this old out of there. A little brittly. All right. We'll go back to our little scotch Bright pad and clean it up a little bit. Okay. Always wet. Kind of clean them up a little bit. Wet that front down a little bit. Kind of rinse it off. And then use your gray scotch right. And when you get done, you'll see another round of dirt come off of it. Backside needs to be clean too where your new gasket's gonna be going at. Mainly in the track, and do these edges. Uh, if it's gonna wear, it's gonna wear right here where people grab in. You wanna get that scrubbed really good in that area. All these little edge corners. 
and all the way around these edges. Those areas that are going to wear the quickest. Get all that contaminants off there. Let's wipe that down right quick. Looking a lot better already. Pretty cool little thing that they have the Vendo stamped in the bottom there. It's pretty neat. I'm going to take this over and just buff this uh, really quickly before I take this off and get ready to paint it. So bear with me and I'll be right back. All right, we got the, everything cleaned up. We buffed that edge, cleaned that uh, stainless up really good. I'm gonna give it one more polish hit here while I can get on it really easily. Cleans it up pretty good. Not bad, not bad. Now, we're gonna get this taped off. And get a little sheet of paper here laid down. I'm gonna shoot this back first. And then we'll flip it over once it dries and we'll get the front. I'm using um, the hammered uh, Hammerite. I'm using the, the silver not the gray the silver is a little bit brighter just like this finish it looks really close to it i don't know if you can see them old machines in the background there but uh once they lose their color they go to black When, they, when they're brand new, they're pretty silverish, just like this. It's obviously been covered for years, so it hasn't lost any of its color. We'll hit a little white coat on here. I always like doing the edges first. But that's where you need to get the most paint, is right on that edge. Don't put it on too heavy. I'd say definitely get you some coats. The hammered effect, I think is actually better. If you don't put it on heavy, it gives just a little bit of a light crinkle that way. Gives it that nice hammered look. So while we're doing that, I'm gonna, I always paint these black, kind of clean them up a little bit. Uh, this is the interior piece that will go over the gasket. So once you put your gasket down, that will go on top of it, kind of a, a ceiling area. So I'm gonna shoot this and get a little black coverage on it. And this does not need a lot of paint. Do not pile it on there, just really light, just a nice, nice light coat's all you need really cleans it up makes it look brand new get your edges they will show up if you don't get the edges other than that that's all that's all you really need to put on that we'll come back kind of moving kind of quickly tonight we're going to buff this this out so take a good look at it i'm going to get it on the buffer and uh i've seen people if you don't have a buffer you know grab you some uh Grab you some stainless, steel wool, a little bit of steel wool will uh, clean these up. I'm going to try to bring this to a pretty good uh, chrome look time I get done. So probably try to get these installed tonight on that door. Okay, we just got it out of the buffer. We're going to put our vivid polish over the top, clean it up a little bit. Let you look at it here. A little bit of time to do the little things, but man, it just makes that machine look so much nicer. It just makes it pop when you get one that's just been all the time and attention taken to little details. And this is, I'd call this a little detail. 
some people would probably maybe send this a chrome shot, but it doesn't need it. And I will probably in another video show you how to do those to get your paint in there. Something you can do. It's very easy. What do you think? Isn't that beautiful? Not a lot of time involved there. Maybe a 15, 20 minutes to get it get it to that shape, but um, that is ready to go back on. We're gonna flip this over and get our coat on the other side. Let's just take a look at it, what it looks like here right quick. Light coats, do the edges first. Most of the wear and tear is on the edges. The other part's gonna be right there, right where the hand grip is at. Like put light coats on, don't try to put too much on at a time. I think it gives a better look. And we'll wait. Make sure we get all our edges covered here. All right, while we're waiting for that to dry, I'll look and see if we've got our, our gasket piece for this. That will go back on right now. Once we get this back together, we'll uh, get it mounted into the door. So I'll be right back. Okay, we got the last coating on the, the door. Looks really good. We have finished the buff on that. Man, really come out good. So we'll assemble this right quick. Oh. Then to have the stainless all polished up, looking good. We'll put the opener strip on there. Get that on. I'm looking awesome. We're gonna put the this back on for now. I noticed I have not received my gasket yet. So just to kind of keep things kind of cleaned up, keep this all together. What do you think of that? Pretty awesome, pretty awesome. Okay, we're gonna get the selection door installed on the Window 39. We're uh, gonna do something a little bit different here just to give you a little bit of, so you can see it, how those screws get installed in there. You will see a little pin that, uh, it's an align, I call it an alignment pin. You'll see a pin on here, and we're gonna bring the camera down a little lower. But you'll see that little alignment hole pin right there on the inside where i was telling you you're going to have issues if your little uh, plate pops off the back that little plates right here i've taped one on right now we're going to tape another one on i've had these come apart and couldn't get the the selection door tightened back up. So I'm gonna tape these on. They kind of still have the little slot there where they kind of were glued on last time. Now we'll come around this front side. So holding that pin up, you'll see that little pin sticking out there. That pin's gotta go in the door. And then you got a screw hole that you're gonna hit up here. I think we'll get it though. I can get the this screw in there. And I feel like it's pushing out the back right now, so that's what we're gonna look at. And it is a little bit. Let's see if I can get it started here again.
This is a, a, a problem area. Doing it by yourself makes it a little tough, but now the screw should be coming through, as you see right there. The rest of them will be a little bit easier. And probably laying down is probably not much easier. This might be this might be the easier way to do it. This is the first time I've ever done one standing up. So everything's tight. We'll recheck everything. Out here. Feels good. Feels good. So the selection door's on. We do have the the gasket to put in here yet. I took the little backing plate off since I saw it was going to be a little bit of an issue. But that will go on net, uh, once we get our gasket here. Hopefully that arrives here in a couple days. Um, so we're going to take the door back off and uh, we'll get this cocked with our urethane and we're ready to put some insulation in this door. Like I said in the early video, I'm using the 3M8609, uh, using for windshields and cars. So it's gonna work really good uh, in this product here, in this setting. Let's get this all cocked in. All right, and if you want to, take you a paper towel. You can wipe around that edge, kind of push it in. Pretty well like the factory did theirs. Just probably wasn't as good as product as what we've got today. But that should give it some good sealing capabilities there. All right, we're ready to put some insulation in. Cut some pieces to length here. So, around 40 inches. I think we've talked about it, but I am using a R13. Uh, not in case this did have a, a back wrapper piece on it that I, I peel it off of that. But like these corners up here, Make sure you get jammed up underneath there really good. Door is probably where you lose a lot of your heat, or excuse me, air conditioning, to the heat. This little piece right here, I just kind of push it back. Some people cut around it. I just push it back, make it, make it work in there. It'll, it'll work. It'll be a little tight. Two sections should be enough. This lower co corner looks a little thin. I want to put a little bit more in there. Get as much as you can possibly get crammed in there. Nice and tight there. Good up here. Put some there, some over here. All right, that's a lot better. That liner will push that down. Okay. A little tall right now, but it will push back. Find our gasket here. I'll buy the preformed ones I have here the last probably the last year. I bought the other ones and, and took and had to you know punch the holes, 
get it all ready. But I found it just saves a lot of time and it fits really nice. So I spent a little extra money and put the preformed ones on. Makes life a lot easier. Probably on my ending video, I'll uh, mention all the supply places that I used on this machine. So, got my tools that I'm needing. Back to my, my Grandpa Ashcraft. Trusty ice pick that he, he gave me. Your holes will line up. And really, that first one, you want to hit right on the money. I can see the, the hole in the side here. Your first one's in. So, when you're going along, you want this gasket to hit literally right on the money all the way up. You can move that gasket around before you tighten it up. And I use my thumb as a guide. And if you get it out just a little bit, you can always back this out. But we're going to go right down this side. See, in the old days, I'd been using my ice pick a little bit more, cutting a hole, trying to get it lined up. Now you got the hole already pre-cut. Yes, they do run a little bit more money, but all the corners are cut, prefab, ready to go. And right there, I don't like that. I don't like that there. Matter of fact, I'm gonna pull it out just a tad. As you're going, in between the gaps here, you can get by with that, and then once you get it where you want it, tighten her down. Looking good. But as you see, not too bad. You just gotta just pay attention to how your gasket is hitting. This one here, I tend to pull it up a little bit on the corners. So we got a little more height coming around. And usually the whole alignment will uh, show that. It'll show that you're needing to stretch it a little bit like right here. The whole alignment on the gasket says I need to pull it up a little bit. There we go starts making that corner look real good. Now see if you were using a just a regular piece, you would be pulling it right now trying to make this corner. And it's doable. I did them forever like that. I didn't know there's any difference. Definitely get you an electric driver for this. If you try to screw all these in by hand, which I did a bunch of them that way. Life is a lot easier with electric driver. <clears throat> a lot easier. Just about got her. All right. We'll check them all right quick with a regular driver. You don't need to over tighten, just snug. Just snug. <clears throat> Nothing, um, you want to keep all the pressures about the same. And if you get it on and get it mounted, something you don't like, you can always back them off and uh, get them the way you want them there. But looking pretty good right now. Okay, we've got 
four screws right here that goes into that plastic housing. Make sure you shove that insulation back in there just the best you can. If you got to take a screwdriver, shove that back in there. Talked about this before. Anytime you're going into plastic, I'd say 99% of the time, you'll see a little slit right in there. Those are made to self cut into the in anytime you're bolting in or screwing into a plastic, you'll see a little bit of a slit there. So that's what's going into these. You should feel that lip edge uh, get all the way down. Okay. I guess we will stand this up and get our uh, get it mounted on the housing here. That's definitely added some weight. Usually start the bottom one first. Make sure we're there. And boom, we're on. Wow, it's starting to look like a machine. Unbelievable. We will, uh, probably the next thing we'll work on is uh, getting the door latch uh, hooked up so we can get this gasket set. <clears throat> and I can see right now, there's one little spot right there I need to correct a little bit that uh, on the gasket. But overall, it's pretty good. Didn't take too long to put that liner on. Well, that finishes uh, this this particular segment. We are getting close. We are getting close, but uh, it is looking looking fantastic. So, thanks for staying with us. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, if there's anything you uh, got any questions on, put it in the comments. I usually get right on. But uh, we're getting close. Thanks for viewing, and we'll catch you on the next one.